Hey, everyone. We're Richard Carlton. Welcome to an awesome day of FileMaker Training. We're here at fmtraining.tv, where every day is an awesome day to learn about the Claris FileMaker platform as we are broadcasting in high definition on YouTube, Twitch, and Discord. So you have your choice of uh, social media kind of outlet for this information. So let's talk about the upcoming broadcast schedule today is Ask Rick Kalman Anything. For those of you who know Rick Kalman, has been around the FileMaker platform as long or longer than I have, which is a lot of years. He was a professional senior level FileMaker developer, and then he kind of sidestepped his way into working at Claris and is essentially a very senior product manager at Claris, mostly focused on the FileMaker side of the platform. So if you want to support the channel, I could say go to Patreon and buy some merch or buy a, a sock puppet or something. Instead, buy a training video bundle for the year. And that will help keep the lights on, allows us to pay Margaret and uh, buy the necessary equipment to bring you the live streams. With that in mind, I want to welcome Rick Kalman. Hey, Rick, how are you? Great. Thanks, Rich. Hey, so Rick is here and ask any questions. So if you have questions about whatever about the FileMaker platform, there's a wide variety of questions. Do we have, has anyone asked any questions yet? Or uh, We already have a comment about freemium. So you ready for that one? Ready for uh, that you may ask the question. What what is what what was the question? It's not a question. Uh, just one saying, I'm looking to for, forward to hearing about freemium version so I can demo it to government clients. So, so I guess the question would be, Rick, is what is freemium and... Where is that at in the world of importance? Yeah, so um, if you have been paying attention, um, you know that about the time we did engage in Austin, Texas, um, in fact, I think during the, the keynote, um, we did launch a, a public backlog. Um, actually, let me share and I'll, I'll, I'll point it out to you. A public backlog, as you can see here, the Claris public backlog, uh, it's on the Claris community. I think there's a pretty obvious link to it. And what we did is we put everything that we're currently working on in progress. And so sort of the code word of in progress means this stuff is in ETS. It's in the product. It's being tested. It's the bugs and kinks are being worked out. So that um, by the time we get it into market in the other people's hands, it's ready to go, right? So all of the stuff that's in progress, um, you uh, can be pretty certain that this is going to be the next release. It can never make a hundred percent guarantee. Obviously, things happen in the world, um, but so that's the in progress side. But at the bottom of that, we begin to then drop in, and this will change over time. And so as soon as we launch the next version. All of this will become shipped and then we'll bring our backlog up to in progress and we'll add new backlog stuff. So far in our backlog, uh, we have a number of items and freemium is on there as well. One of the nice things about this backlog being on the community is you can also see it gets upvotes. I think freemium is pretty high up there. Um, it may be the highest, uh, but things like Let's Encrypt and believe it or not, um, thing that surprised me, but I get it, is that we got almost as many uh, upvotes for the uh, three uh, significant enhancements we made to working with JSON arrays, which tells me a lot of people are doing integration with our platform uh, to get that kind of vote. However, it's it's there. Now, the thing I would say about um, uh, uh, three tier of the Claris platform is our intent is that um, you can have not time limited versions of the Claris platform. So FileMaker, rather than a 45 day trial, it's just FileMaker Pro, uh, feel free to use it. It's in single user mode um, and, and, but also, and includes all the other properties, um, but also includes um, uh, uh, Claris Connect, uh, which you may know when we shipped uh, FileMaker 2023, uh, we, we created a free tier of Claris Connect uh, and then the, the next piece to come in is uh, Claris Studio. So we're still trying to, to land that. Um, as you may uh, realize, there was a time where we went down a path of the Claris platform, introduced a lot of confusion, some barriers. Um, we sort of unticked that as we got feedback and realized it was just too much of a, of a barrier, too confusing. Um, and so we just said everything that would have been what we were doing is now just part of what you already have, FileMaker, right? That's sort of been delaying freemium because it's not that we want to make FileMaker Pro or the FileMaker platform itself free, but we want to make the entire larger Claris platform 
Um, uh, this is on our backlog. Anything that shows on our backlog is essentially what I hear from Brad is don't make me a liar. If I'm saying something public or if it's publicly there, then, then, you know, we do this. Now, the thing about uh, free tier, it's going to be a bet on our part, right? Um, we still do, you know, finished goods is like that single box copy that, you know, you might buy. And, and we, we still do, uh, you know, millions and millions of dollars a year just in those one-off box copies or, you know, ESD um, version. Once free tier goes out there, I expect that to be gone, right? Um, because why would you pay for something? Some people will, but why would you pay for something when you can get it for free? So the bet has to be that um, we do this in such a way that the upside is so much better or larger than anything we might lose in revenue from finished good, which has been diminishing over the years as we've gone more and more to licensing. Um, on top of that, um, we're also, and Giuliano has, has been on this show um, uh, probably at least once, if not twice, and he'll be on again. Um, we will also be revamping our licensing as well as our store um, so that people can actually figure out what not only what we hawk, but how to give us money for it if they want it, right? So that is that is going on as well. These things will all come together. As soon as we can possibly get this out there, we'll do it. Um, and, um, you know, I, I can't say what date it is other than it's it's good that it shows up here um and um and and, and we still intend uh, we think that it will really help expand the the platform if people can decide that this is something i need before they pay us any money right and it just it's a hard sell to say give me a minimum of five users and then figure out if it's going to work for you rather than figure out if it's going to work for you and then decide how many users you you want to want to give us yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree with that. Uh, for those of you wondering about this, let me provide a little bit of additional color. The general concept is that if you want to use FileMaker Pro Go, I guess, to a degree, but FileMaker Pro in a single user mode where you're not collaboratively working with a team, then the idea is that's kind of a free level for you, right? So it's kind of what the runtime kind of that used to be. Some of you remember that, this kind of single kind of existence. As soon as you start sharing it collaboratively, the idea is that you're in a business case, some sort of organizational, and then you're deriving value. So in my opinion, as an outside person, you should pay Claris when you start deriving value with your team. And that's kind of what the thread, the needle they're trying to thread, if that makes sense, right? So I don't know much more than any of you do, except that that's kind of the idea. And uh, I think it's a huge opportunity to really expand people trying FileMaker and, and uh, going forward on that. And then licensing, uh, licensing improvements. And and the, the biggest thing, and I was talking to Rick about this right before we started, is that part of the confusion is that the website that Claris has is, in my opinion, the first thing it asks you is like, well, would you like to buy Claris Cloud? I'm like, most people don't even understand what the upside or downsides of that are. And it's not the first question you ask. So Claris is trying to revamp licensing and a big part of that i think is the website so those are hugely welcome things in my in my world margaret questions uh we have a follow-up comment from bev and then i'll do a question from angela uh bev developers that don't want to be counted against client user numbers may still be the individual license yeah there's a number of reasons i mean you know it's easy to forget sometimes that FileMaker standalone is a really great data manipulation tool. I use it all the time just to say, okay, I got this data, it's in this spreadsheet, I wanna bring it in, do something with it, and then do something else with it. Um, and just as a personal productivity tool, it's fantastic, right? Uh, and a lot of people just use it for that. Um, and um, it's sort of, uh, you know, your uh, secret weapon, if you know how to make uh, FileMaker um, go through all its paces and you got uh, some something to do with some data, you got a heck of a lot of tools at your uh, at your wayside. And, you know, I, I think that we often forget that in and of itself, it's a great tool. So I agree. And sometimes what happens is someone bought a five seat license and they one Z, two Z finished goods added to it. They'll buy one or two um, uh, additional right off from the store or somewhere else. And then we'll just add them into the mix. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you wondering about this, just before I, I'm just going to clarify this, but I would expect that the the peer to peer capability uh, in FileMaker Pro goes away as part of this. So for those of you trying to, and I run into people all the time, they're like they don't they don't want to buy it, so they find trying to find a way of weaseling around the edges of this thing. But it's once again, if you're using it in a collaborative environment, then you should be prepared to to pay a couple bucks to get it. So 
Other questions, Margaret, that we have? Yes, we have one from Angela Mills. Rick, when, did, when will the new FileMaker certification test be released? Uh, that is an answer that I don't know because I focus primarily on the, the, the product. Um, and uh, I will confess that I don't know everything about everything going on in the company. Um, but um, I know that we're working on it as far as when that date is. I, I, I don't know. Let me let me jump in on this a little bit. So Claris has altered its trajectory because I've been dealing with marketing quite a bit. And that's a part of the company that's under marketing. They've gone from a super hard test that's impossible to that not impossible to pass, but you had to really study to this test where you can take it at home and you could have 12 professional developers behind you trying to help you answer the questions if you wanted to go down that road. The test is not so much about you being that they're validating that you know the material. They're 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 trying to get you to to be uh, like um, mind candy. We talk about living in someone's mind for free, right? Um, and so by you going through and learning and watching the videos and, and it being exposed to the material, you know more about the FileMaker platform. They're just trying to get you to be more uh, mindful of it, if that makes sense, thoughtful about it, understanding what its capabilities are. It's less about, are you certified? And if you got, you can handle a triple multi-predicate key with a join to join across a multi-file with an ODBC connection. That's not part of it, right, anymore. And so they have kind of a, a low, medium, and high. I think it's low is called associate. Medium is specialty specialist. And high is their expert. And that's available for Connect. But they're doing these three kind of online tests, per se, for the pro product, the server product, Connect, and probably eventually Studio. So some of these are available. Uh, so Alliance worked on some of them. Productive's worked on some of them. I don't know what the trajectory is in terms of a really hard test where you go somewhere and take that. I don't know that that ever comes back again, like the way it used to be. So I think it's just an online test that you take. And if you mess it, you can, if you miss it, there's, there's no charge for it, but if you don't get 80% or better, then you can go back and immediately take it again. There's not like, well, you got to pay another hundred bucks and wait two weeks. I think it's been greatly simplified. All right. Next question, Margaret, on that We've one. We've got a stack. So, stack of uh, questions. All right. Cool. <laughs> and does Claris have or know of any tools that can help identify where corruption or other issues might exist in a file? I know about recover, restore from backup, et cetera. But was wondering if there's something else to take a look at a file and pinpoint any issues, like a field causing issues or a layout or some other part of the database that isn't up to par. Yeah. So, um, besides all the things you just mentioned, I believe. We do have some internal tools that we use when we're trying to track things down. Um, and we are currently working with a cohort of, of people on what I call the application lifecycle management um, uh, theme. Uh, and we're focusing currently on the three CLI developer tools um, that we make available, the, the latest, the, the FileMaker developer tool, the fast data migration tool, and then the holy grail of the, um, you know, the, the schema migration tool serializing to do XML. In the kitchens that we're running uh, to get um, direct feedback from people that are already putting these tools through their paces, using them for automating deployments and, and that sort of thing. Um, it's definitely one of the things we're looking at is uh, better tools to um, to forewarn or be able to um, understand um, before, you know, the classic, uh, I have data corruption and I didn't know it and I don't have any backups that don't have that corruption in, in them. Uh, so I can't get back because it wasn't until something happened or I uh, took the file down and tried to bring it back up that I discovered it or that. It doesn't tell me, you know, it says that I need to recover it, I recover it, but it doesn't tell me, you know, what it did or it didn't fix it, right? So um, we're certainly aware of that um, and that we're, we're looking at that right now um, to, to uh, we, we get it, believe me, I get it. Um, uh, and uh, we'll see if we can come with better as well. Can I, uh, I'm going to ask a question, extend right off of this since you already brought up the day, the, the application lifecycle management is that what you call it? Yes. Lifecycle management. So that's the idea that you're gonna get, you're gonna build a tool, you're gonna deploy it, then you're gonna update it and all that kind of stuff and update servers and things. So what kinds of things? I mean, you want to dive into that a little bit more about what that's about? That's an initiative that you're chasing, you're pushing, right? 
Yeah, so um, it is something, as you know, if you have spent any time um, deploying and supporting customers with, uh, with deployed um, solutions that you've built, uh, that it's, it, it's the beginning of the engagement when you when you have finished building it. Uh, it's when you deploy it and now it's it's in its life cycle, right? So what this is, is the end to end. Some of you may be familiar with the classic um, DevOps workflows where you have a, uh, a, a testing server, a staging server and a production server. That's a piece of that. Um, that's where the command line tools that we have come in uh, in handy because you can script things um, at, at a level and it becomes part of automation. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, and so they can use those. So those are being used for things like automatic and, you know, Devon and some of these tools that are, people are creating. Then there's another set of tools um, that you see with FM Perception, Inspector Pro, uh, the thing that um, uh, uh, Nick Orr, um, I, I think, elements. has. Yeah, uh, base elements, where essentially you're able to walk um, classically through the, the, the DDR is the thing that pointed to. And then it gives you a bunch of information, points to places um, that, that uh, you know, there may be conflicts. One of the things we're working on is it's one thing to know that there's an issue, but wouldn't it be nice to have deep linking so you could click on it and it would take you exactly to where that is, right? Um, there, uh, um, since we moved from the um, DDR, the, develop, the database design uh, report that is uh, XML or HTML that people have been used to for a while, to the new XML that we use for things like add-ons or to save as XML, to serialize and deserialize, um, uh, you know, um, FileMaker um, to XML and vice versa, um, then um, uh, that that is 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 part of that as well. So the vision is that you build something, and then even in the build part, um, you know. Maybe gone are the days where the most common thing is one person is working on. It. You may have a team working on. It. How do you not step on each other? So version control, right? We're also talking to that extended team about being able to have, make a change, save it the schema, check it into Git, and be able to use things like Git to be able to to do polls and that sort of thing. Um, uh, and um, and so it's creation, version control. Um, this is where you start to see some of the transaction stuff coming in, the um, the troubleshooting tools, uh, and then the ability to patch a file, uh, not at the gross, you know, multi-gigabyte level, you know, with a, with a sledgehammer, but to be able to infuse a piece of schema, but to do it in such a way that you come out the other end with how you intended and and and, and not wrecking havoc. Um, uh, so all of that is uh, is taken on. So that's the entire life cycle, the way I see it. So I've got that all sort of splayed out as an end to end. I decided the first thing I wanted to do was jump right in to get the feedback on how we can improve the three command line tools that are being leveraged now because people are using them already. And so, you know, if you're an SBA, you have this problem. You build it once, you deploy it everywhere, and some people, um, God help them, also allow each individual instance to customize on top of that, but now they're trying to update this thing. And the other side is hosting providers. They take a heavy advantage of, of this kind of stuff, auto, automatic, uh, uh, and there's a lot of people leveraging this. So it, those are the lowest hanging because they're CLI, there's not GUI on top of it. I got Clay Makel, who knows how everything works, working along with me and Dave McKee and a couple of our talented engineers. Uh, and we'll make sure that those tools are doing the kinds of things you need them to move them forward. We'll solidify them. And then we're, we're going out to the, you know, the, um, the, um, the development uh, staging uh, and production server and be able to script that. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, this is something that's we needed for a long while. Uh, and it's something very common that people expect this, this day and age when, when they're coding. And FileMaker didn't come up through, through that path. So we're late to the game there, but um, sorely, sorely needed. And some of this stuff stays massive amount of time. I mean, we were in a, in a kitchen yesterday, uh, and Jeff Haw, that you may know, does, has cost a manager, said just in his ability to use some of these tools and the fast data migration tool, he went from something that used to take three full days to half an hour. Right. And, you know, what does all of that time back mean to you? It's tremendous. And on top of that, those three days were hairy. 
their three days oh, yeah. like, take it take it down friday and hope that god is back up on monday right and uh, that's no way to live <laughs> that's no way to live <laughs> so so let me provide a little color for everyone here real quick so we, you hear me refer to sometimes the star trek transporter here uh, when we're doing our training for those of you who don't watch the show very often you're here because of rick um just play along with you momentarily but the idea is that there's a process so we have this ddr called it with, creates an xml they call xml1 is kind of the internal slang at, at claris and the idea is that if you could um take a file fmp12 file and dematerialize it down to a text file with perfect fidelity fidelity is the word i like to use perfect fidelity into a text file and it's xml or json or whatever the hell's in there um and you could add a layout or edit a layout, or you could see corruption, or you could do a million different things. So if you had to patch the file and you had one new layout and maybe a table or something like that, you could just paste it into the text, copy text, paste it in, then take that text file and run it through the Star Trek transporter the other way and rematerialize it back into FMP 12. That's a, a huge deal. It's a huge deal, right? And Claris has been playing with this on and off since FileMaker 17 and or thereabouts. And uh, it's what makes the add-ons work. So the add-on, you drag and drop it in there. Um, but imagine if it could do more, right? It was perfect fidelity. And so there's been conversations about that. And that's what this is about because right now, and Rick, to, to make it simple for people, the Star Trek transporter in an emergency will work, but it lops off fingers and ears and stuff like that. <laughs> and so... If you're going to die, and we've had a customer who was about to lose the whole thing on a server that was going away, and we couldn't get it off the server because we didn't have control, and they it was their database, but the server was going away. We did an emergency tar Star Trek transport off the server, and he lost part of a layout and a couple other things we fixed. So we, we built new fingers for him, but it saved his life, and so it was okay. But that's really like, you know, do you really want to use this? I don't want to lose an eye or a finger today. So Rick's job, amongst other things, is to make it so it's with a word perfect fidelity is the word I use because that's a perfect reproduction, right? And what does that mean? Well, if there's security in there, what do we do? Does the security stay in there as passwords and stuff? Or, you know, what, what happens with all that? So there's a lot of bits and pieces that Claris is working on. This is a huge deal. If you had this in freemium, I think overnight this platform would just take off. Don't tell sales that because they'll think it's a great idea, but <laughs> it, it, I think the platform would take off. You could make it free, and then you take all the professional developers and make their lives easier. Yeah, one of the things, uh, Rich, that uh, I, I believe you'll see in the, the very next release that's that's, that's going to be here not in not too distant future um, in the developer tools, the save as XML, and it generates an XML file, right? So um, but in the next release, that XML file similar to what you could do with an Excel file, you would then be able to drag and drop back on, drop it onto the, the FileMaker icon and it will rematerialize, right? Rematerialize. So, yeah. And we're working yeah. on two words here. So. Yeah, so we are, um, and that's part of pushing this forward. As, as Rich said, we actually invented this for another reason. We had known that this was the holy grail that people were asking for. We had done a kitchen maybe 10 years ago where um, this was asked for and we were just like, oh my gosh, it should be impossible. But we sort of backed into it another way and then realized, holy crap, we have the ability to, um, to uh, turn this into text. It was XML, but as Rich said, it could be JSON, it could be some other thing and then rematerialize it. And then you can manipulate it at a level that you could, you know, essentially the GUI is between you and what you really want to do if you know what you want to do. Um, and and especially for people that are patching, it's very common to, you know, to rather than a full upgrade, you just, okay, I'm just adding this. I'm just, I'm just want to push this, the value list um, into the schema. And I don't want to do it, I just, but I want to know that it, and I, and I want to know what's reliable, right? And that's where things like, you know, um, testing and, and, and staging servers come in. Uh, and, that, and, you know, if you remember, we used to give you one server and then we started giving you three or more servers. And it was for that re very reason. It's like, we don't care how many servers you have. We want you to have more because we don't, we want you to, we'd rather you deploy your solutions with a, a, a net rather than on the tightrope with, with that one, especially if it's a, it's a high type rope. And lions down below. And lions down below. All right, Margaret, next question. Yes. Uh, real quick, people, so you know, people, I don't want people to panic. I do see your questions. I will ask them in the order they are received. So 
First one from Jerry Robin. Any plan to allow the ability to expand the size of the icon grid and button setup? The scrollable 8x4 grid is really slow to use and doesn't allow you to visualize the full set of available icons. Thank you. Not particularly, but, you know, one of the things these days that we've gone agile and don't have to necessarily wait an entire year and only do so many things that um, we can knock some of these things off. I have a whole slew of things we're working in now that I call developer quality of life enhancements. Um, and uh, typically these are easy for an engineer to knock off in a day or two, and they make a huge difference to people who live in our product, right? So we're collecting up a bunch of those um, and because um, anytime we can give you time back, that's the best thing we could give you. You can't get time. You know, this is a piece of your life. So if you are in living in our product 40, 50, 60 hours a week, week in, week out, year in, year out, then anytime we can give you pieces back. Um, there have been things where someone said something at a DEF CON or Engage to Clay Makel, uh, one of our uh, architects, one of the, the guys who built this whole franchise. He went in his room that night and he knocked it out the next day. Um, and then unfortunately in, 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 the, um, in that world, we'd have to wait a year to 18 months before we could drop it into the release because we weren't agile. We were waterfall, right? And, and so these things would, would languish. Um, so it allows us to address those things. So Jerry, I would, I would consider this in that, uh, uh, for instance, I could give it to a guy like uh, Dave McKee, we pick it up and you know, in the next release, you could have something like that. So why don't you, uh, Jerry, send me an email um, with that um, request and that'll be the easiest thing if you if you want to, so I don't have to remember off the top of my head, uh, but that's a good one. Right. Another question from Lars. Uh, do you guys intend to add a numbers import? We, over the years, we have um, desired to do that for sure. Um, and I think we even looked at it again recently. Part of the reason we didn't do that is that um, Apple was fairly often changing the underlying schema, um, very often. Um, and, and they didn't publish the schema, not even internally. Um, and so, you know, it, it made it really hard to, to, to do that. Um, but absolutely, um, if we can do that, um, w we would, we would like to, it, it's just a no brainer. Okay. Next one, uh, uh, running FileMaker slash Claris servers on gov cloud. It'd be great to show one federal government agency cracked the code on security, authentication, et cetera. This needs to be a white paper from Claris to calm the nerves of government clients. Point taken. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, do me a favor. Send me an email with a little bit more to that. Uh, if you, you can see my name on the screen. The convention here at Claris is the first name, typically, not everyone, first name, underscore, last name at claris.com. So that's my email address, mm -hmm. right? So send it to rick underscore kelman at claris.com. It, certainly, we've heard GovCloud multiple, multiple times, but you know, give me a little color paragraph two paragraphs it'll that way it'll i get from me hearing it here to um being able to to, to shop it in turn can i, but it's, can it's I also a make a suggestion on this for all of you the way claris works um because i'm down here and you get to see this happen is that they want to know if they invest in this what the upside is that i mean how will it help you and then how does it help them and so if you want to outline this and then kind of a couple sentences about the the benefit to the you know community or to the Claris or to you or whatever okay that'll help make the case for that but GovCloud is something we're interested in for for sure um and uh, i one of my colleagues is sangeeta uh banerjee uh and she's the product manager for filemaker cloud she's also the one that did all of the work to get the soc 2 compliance and in our cloud properties which is no mean feat um and uh um, this is something that we're, we're looking at uh, right now, uh, along with uh, things like uh, support for FIPS and, and that, those sorts of things. Okay, next question. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, I'm going to rephrase this a little. Um, there are multiple top requests for Claris, uh, for example, horizontal portals, um, customer header for columns for export. Is there a particular reason they haven't been added yet? Typically because they're big and gnarly. And um, uh, it, it, more difficult than you would think, uh, and uh, yeah, su super well known. Um, uh, and also, we are looking at uh, at that. The other thing is, there's a lot of things that we're experimenting with 
that we can do now with um, with um, Clara Studio, which is uh, a a more modern stack for expressing the the, the GUI um, that we have brought into FileMaker. Um, to you know, in, in a way, and I'm not saying this is what we're doing, but it goes back to sort of you know anyone who's aware of 4D, the ability to separate data from structure, so that you can update the look and feel of something without having to bother you know uh, the, the the back end. Uh, unfortunately, most of the magic of what FileMaker is is it's so intertwined with itself. It's very similar to the magic of Apple between the hardware and the software just being so. Inter intertwined that the combo of those two things, um, but also this API era that we are now in of integration, uh, and it also, you know, we've gone a, a route that we never would have thought of in the past is, you know, you guys know how to make our tools sing. So why do we want to stand in the way of developers who can use things like JavaScript or JSON um, to open it up? I mean, we used to be a data island. I mean, we really did. Um, and then once we um, we introduced REST, it just blew the socks off of things like, um, um, you know, FMP URL and, and the RESTful API um, has really been a game changer because we have become a world of integrating with all these things that are out there. Um, and, you know, um, so so yeah, it's, it's, it's within that, that, that sphere. But the, these things are still talked about. I mean, it, it was, what, 20 years before we did script triggers? I was the I was the product manager that brought it in and, and you know the I lost it the first time because I lost an engineer uh, and then I swore I was never going to do it again but of course I did and then I was told by engineering oh you know knives are sharp and I said I don't care and then they figured out oh, okay let's make them a little bit taller um, because Rick's not going to say that we don't have to do it and what would our world be like right now if we didn't have script triggers oh yeah uh, but look how long it took us to do it too um, I remember it was yeah. a couple times it was on to be shipped at the last second it was well, well one of the things I, I like to joke about is we don't deliver something big like that until you stop asking for it <laughs> right <laughs> so people stopped asking for script triggers because they asked for so long they never got them and then boom they had script triggers right so sometimes it's just serendipitous right uh, the right place right time something happens we are looking though at for sure we're looking at um, vertical uh, portals also the ability to have a master header all the way across and those kind of things. Uh, we get it, you know, uh, probably the thing that needs most attention on FileMaker is uh, its facade, right? It's, you know, it's modalness and some of the, uh, you know, because sitting behind the scenes is an incredible product. Um, but yeah, you know, we've got a lot of work to do and that's why I, I, I'm excited about some of the stuff we're doing with Studio. Some of the stuff you don't have to worry about or just the ability to not have to make 16 layouts because of all different screen sizes and, and it just auto adjust, you know, uh, as you would expect. And then on the studio side, they're working on giving you much greater control over the flow as well. Uh, and uh, so you sort of have your cake and eat it too. Um, but the same token, we know that a lot of people are printing forms and they need to be pixel perfect. And so we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and then make everything flow and then just blow out of the water your ability to do print forms or uh, reports exactly how you want to control them. So we want you to be able to control the pixel and we also want you to be able to not have to control the pixel. Ah, on and off. All right. Well, uh, next question, Margaret. Uh, the next question is where, okay, sorry. I got lost in the scroll. Okay. When do you think XML to FMP um, 12 files will be released? It's already there. So are you saying it? Cause right now it's there as sort of a, pre-release so are you saying um well if it's going to be there because you can already save as xml and you can already turn that back in, in into filemaker but we've sort of had it listed as as preview and that's because there's some things that we still need to finish up to clean it up um so um you will see like i said in the ne very next release you'll you'll see some enhancements there and that's a big part of what i'm working on currently right now with the application lifecycle management developer tools uh, thing as as well so if i was to guess They're talking about the command to bring it back in right because that's normally hidden at this point the the x because you can output xml2 right under the tools menu but the, in terms of uh slurping it or sucking it in or importing it yeah, or whatever xml2 fmp12 file so i assume they mean that directly. Yeah, they're talking about bringing it back in so 
Yeah, no, we're, we're working on that right now. Um, I, I can't tell you exactly. I mean, when it's, when it's Rich already talked about some of the, the things we need to hash through um, once, for instance, you know, security. Um, you know, where that is, frankly, that's one of the things that, that's holding it back. Um, yeah, yeah, but and also there are some differences in behaviors and then you have to deal with things like, you know, um, how, what can I rely on? Like, you know, is the UUID truly unique? Mostly, but not necessarily those kinds of things. And when is it not? Oh, if you did this, that or the other, and I wanted to say the same. So there's a lot of different things to, to, to work out uh, here. Um, it's a, a fairly gnarly problem, but we're tackling it, right? Um, we see the necessity of it. Um, um, and um, yeah, so I, I can't say when. All I can tell you is we're actively working on it. And every release, you should see more and more functionality and capability. Yeah, apparently just a little color on that to slurk to slurp it back in. I keep going to marketing and because we can't keep using the word import every time we want to bring something in. Marketing resisted the idea. I said, well, you should have a suck it. Function. Mm -hmm. They didn't like that. So, but the idea is the way you do it right now is you kind of build it, you output it, and you turn it into a really fat uh, add-on. <laughs> and then that drags it in. And that's how you kind of get around it. But it's, uh, once again, we're talking about the Star Trek transporter where you're losing body parts. So it's there, but is it going to be perfect fidelity? No, it's kind of loose. But that's, it's a high, I, what Rick's saying, it's a high gain opportunity for the platform. When they when they solve this problem, the doors that this the problems this fixes are huge. Yeah, one of the things, Rick, is a follow up to that <clears throat> that we're we're looking at in, in the um, it's probably not in the backlog, but it's something that we're we already have an engineer looking at is um, to take the add ons further. So rather than having this funky layout um, and set up dialogue, um, that it has its own space. In order to, um, you know, it's not stored um, in in a layout, <clears throat> and then you can configure it through the inspector, right? Rather than being a separate thing, and that will um, that will make it give it a lot more utility um, because you don't need all of that stuff, and you know, it's just fragile. Or what happens if you go into the the layout and and, and and you change something? But behind the scenes, it's incredible what it's doing, and the it's incredible what it's doing is the part that we're trying to take and polish. And, and make um, every once in a while, you'll hear people that have been in this platform a long time say that would be a game changer. And um, the, this is one of those, right? Um, this changes everything. I yeah. also hear that about uh, often about freemium um, for, for different reasons, but just to, I mean, for imagine freemium and now you could get it into schools, right? right. There's just no barrier to entry and, you know, and, and people become familiar with it. And imagine you familiarize yourself with tools such as this and you get out of college or high school or whatever. And now you've got, you know, you're the one bringing it to, to the place saying, I, I could solve that problem with this platform. It, right, it opens Mark. the doors. Do you guys intend to add custom field name labels to display on layouts instead of just showing the actual field names? Again, that's uh, something that's been around uh, a long while. I believe that this will find its way into the product as a side effect of some of the things we're needing to do to support large language models in, um, for AI, you know, which is you're also going to see the first salvo in the next release um, <clears throat> because um, we've already begun to um, add context through um prompts that tells AI what a field or some schema is intended for so that it knows how to properly give, uh, it's, think of it as prompt engineering is what they call it. Um, but then that opens the door for friendly field labels, right? It's this behind the scenes, but I want to display that. Um, I think it will come as a side effect uh, of that. So it's something, yes, we are interested, absolutely understand huge upside if you could programmatically do that and imagine you know deploying your solution in multiple languages and not having to you know do anything other than um you know to say oh i'm running on a french system so the labels are now french yeah okay. that's another big one next question uh do you guys intend to add a hover over an object to be able to trigger a script natively within the product rather than just triggering tooltip mm -hmm. 
I can't say that we're specifically thinking about that right now, but you know, send me send me an email if that is a use case, and and yeah, you know, um, uh, we'll consider it for sure. That's not a bad idea. So definitely email Rick underscore Calman at Clares dot com. Make sure you explain the upside and all that kind of stuff. As a side note, that suggestion was quite divisive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on on the on the conversation just now you mean, on the hovering yes because you might hover too long and accidentally do something you had not intended to do would you like we'll, to delete we'll all records are you sure <laughs> okay gone <laughs> uh i believe that the mbs plugin actually can do that now with some stuff with their overlay stuff so do you guys intend to add a linux client for filemaker huh. you know no Unless, <laughs> unless it compels itself, right? And just right now, I don't see it co compelling itself. Um, you know, uh, heck, if I could get people to use, although I, I know a number of you, uh, the Linux server, right? Um, so let's start there. But it's, I think it's similar to uh, FileMaker Go for Android. It was a lot easier for us to port FileMaker, which is already running on OS 10, uh, to iOS then it would be, we'd have to completely rebuild FileMaker to do Android, right? Unless we, you know, did something different. So um, it's not that because we're Apple, we don't do that. It's just, it's an incredible amount of, of engineering effort. And there's so many things to do with this platform. That's, that's the, that's the frustrating thing about this platform is I literally have tens of thousands of requests and all of them are legit, right? And, um, and then I, maybe in any given release, I can do, 10 or 20 things. And so the whole job is which 10 or 20 things do you do? And then let's say that those 10 or 20 people that asked for it, they're thrilled. And then there's like 5,000 people that are pissed at you, right? It's just, it's just the nature of the game, right? You know, as a product manager, you get a thick skin because you can, you know, this, you build stuff for customers. They always want something else, right? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, the, it's so we try to get as good as possible at um, at prioritization. And we're also trying to get closer and in these iterative feedback loops with the people that are actually the ones that know how to use our, our, our product, right? We make the musical instrument, you guys make music, right? Um, and uh, that helps a lot because then, you know, I used to get this all the time. Um, we'd have a kitchen and used to be back in the day, pre-pandemic, they were actually in person and believe it or not, people would fly from all over the world on their yeah. own dime to come. And I always felt a little bit bad about that, but we would always show them, Oh, Hey, here's what we're going to do and give us some feedback. And they'd always come back and go, how about we do this before you tell us what you're going to do and allow us to engage with you on the things that we need you to do. And so now we're in the, the ability to do that. And so we're collecting the requirements directly from the people iterating on it. And then we also introduced something called ring zero, which is prior to even going to ETS, someone has a particular problem, say once or twice a week, servers going down, right? And it's like killing them. Um, we send them directly to our engineers. They work directly with them. Um, they give them special builds. Um, they test uh, uh, through it. It says, oh, yeah, that's working. We drop it into ETS and test it. And then you all benefit from that. And we've been able to significantly stabilize the platform because the problem of the old method is we could ne you could never actually test something until it's in the real world in the ETS you can't actually do it in the real world. So what it is you do, you look at atomically at each of the new enhancements, but it's not until you roll them all together that all the bugs come out, right? So you ship the thing and then you have to do all these VREVs because you couldn't discover ahead of them. So now we can directly work with the person having the problem, knock that problem down and then do it the other way around, get that into ETS and out in the market. And that was the entire 19, what I call the 19.x era where we were staying on 19.1, 19.2, 19.3, we were doing that and stabilizing, excuse my French, stabilizing the hell out of the platform. Um, and um, because there's no better way um, to do that than directly with you guys. All right. So Margaret has a question there. She was rolling her. Uh, well, just go ahead and ask the question, Margaret. Go ahead. Uh, will Mac runtime make a comeback? Well, let me jump in, Rick, and then you can clean it up after that. But the uh, <laughs> the short version is that if if Claris comes out with freemium, then you have basically a free client, right? And so the question is, is is that good enough? And does that help you, right? Because what Claris did a survey once upon a time way back in the day, 
and people who got the runtime for you know the developer bundle something that most of the customers would never upgrade to a fully paid version of pro right they just never would and so claire's had this huge huge investment that didn't return on an roi but with freemium if you could use that to a degree to help get your solution more inexpensively into a customer I think Claris also gets the benefit of marketing and, and selling it and big boost on awareness. That's like a twofer, right? Kind of. I don't know, Rick, if you want to take a swing at that. It, it, no, I think it's it's an interesting area because um, it, what I think you're referring to before is we used to have a networkable runtime, right? And that was eating our lunch. And then we made it non-networkable. And so then it's essentially a, a single, um, you know, um, uh, use uh thing, but a lot of people were doing stuff, but it still has a utility, right? So I agree with Rich that you, I, the way to think about freemium FileMaker is the way you think about um, FileMaker Go. It's free, right? And people build stuff with FileMaker and then they deploy, you know, single off things um, to Go It's it, it, and and they inherit that. And they, and the difference would be that that tool that is your runtime, depending upon how you do it, also you have the ability to edit. But you never had the ability to edit in runtime. You'd have to use FileMaker Pro for that. So it's a sort of a game changer. But I, I, I think that it will change that way. It, 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 all the rest depends upon what's the use case or what you're trying, really trying to accomplish. And so I wouldn't use the old runtime as the example of it. But what, what you liked about it is, is and what, how would we do that in, in the future? Um, so there may be some stuff we do there. Um, just it's just. Let's just say it's not on our radar right now to address directly, um, but absolutely aware of the desire for people to have that. Yeah, and I think premium solves a majority of that. It's just yeah. uh, it'd be a little bit of a branding issue there with it because it wouldn't say your name on it would be Claris Biomaker or whatever. Well, one of the things that maybe we end up doing is the very thing you're sort of alluding to is being able to, to white label, right? That could be. Yeah. Next question, Marks. Question. Yep. We still got a lot. <laughs> uh, question for Rick. Any chance to improve or optimize the performance of execute execute SQL, especially with AI? It'll be used even more. Yes, we are. Um, we are forced to address that head on because of the stuff we're doing with AI. Again, a lot. I love these these things that we do that um, advance the product in another direction um, as a side effect. Um, that we might not have done otherwise. Uh, you know, I've been working with Lee Snover for a number of years who has been hammering me on the non-performant parts of, you know, either execute SQL or, or you know, ESS or ex external SQL data sources. Um, so we're well aware of that. Uh, and yes, because um, essentially it's easier for us, it's easier for AI to um, read SQL than it is for it to read FileMaker. Um, so a lot of stuff we translate from FileMaker to SQL so that AI can do its thing on it and then translate it back. And because of that, it's it's causing us um, to take a hard look at an architectural level of the performance of, of those mechanisms. So yeah, I think you'll you'll see stuff, yes. Any improvements to reduce client server chattiness for, for, for performance reasons? For instance, Vince Minano showed a technique that put all clients' edits on globals and then wrote to it with PSOS. I think that sort of enscapulating should be built in to reduce chattiness and improve performance. Yeah, it's something we've been looking at for a long while. Um, historically, the thing that made FileMaker what it was, it came at the cost of chattiness, right? So that FileMaker always knew all the piece parts and how they hung together, but and it was fine on the WAN, not so much on a WAN. I mean, fine on LAN, not so much on WAN, right? So, um, and one of the things, and we were in a LAN world almost exclusively, it just didn't come up as much. And believe it or not, and you will believe it, as at one point, FileMaker was making 22 round trips between the client and the server. And sometimes it would do things like, oh, I need this, uh, this, this set of records. Let me pull all of it down and then get the record. So for a number of years, we've been trying to reduce those round trips and we've gotten further and further down. We're doing more with caching. Um, and, you know, when you're doing stuff with caching, you got to be careful. I mean, we had a, uh, I can't remember what the heck they called it before. We had to rip it out because um, if you don't do it right, you're you're doing it wrong, right? Startup and, restoration. Was that startup yeah. restoration? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so all of these things, I think you'll see. Yep. 
Uh, will live code help bridge the Android gap? You all, we were going down that 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 path, um, but it turned out we couldn't get there all the way. Not because of the fidelity uh, of it. It was more for a massive loophole that was left in how many how many let's just say you could use 100 people 100 people could use our product and buy one license and we didn't like that idea and we figured that you guys were good enough business people to realize that why should i pay for 100 licenses when i like to pay for one and we'd have our lunch eaten um and so we couldn't we couldn't we worked with them for well over a year um but it just didn't work out for us licensing wise um and, and uh, if we ever do a FileMaker Go for Android, we'll do a FileMaker Go for Android. We'll we'll build it, right? That's a good good answer. That's a very you people wonder about Rick. That was a very honest answer, right? I like that. I love that. Okay, Marcus, next question. Yes. Any chance we could get field name aliases that would be displayed in the sort dialog or export dialog? My field names are sometimes not user over user friendly. Oh, really? <laughs> We hit that question a little bit ago, like slightly framed differently, right, Rick? Yeah. Well, it was a bit. One was for the labels, but this is more for like when you're doing sorting. It, I, it's it's similar, I think. But uh, and that, I I think we've been actually we've been looking at that too. Um, that's coming out of some of the um, developer quality of life uh, enhancement workshops that we're doing. Um, you know, some of these just the last mile that, you know, like some of the control that you can have over value lists and, and sorting and, and, and the, that kind of thing. Um, uh, so we are looking at it. Yeah. Will it be possible to choose the default theme in FM? We are looking at themes again and giving more affordances to, um, to be able to work with themes more eloquently than you can now. And I'm not talking so much, you know, CSS as much as how you apply them, where you apply them. And, um, uh, and also at the same time, you know, getting some better default ones um, as well. So that's something that we're looking at right now. Okay. How are we doing, Margaret? Keep going. Uh we have a fun question, which I'll ask since I don't see any other pertinent ones at the moment. Speaking of expanding the audience for FileMaker, any thoughts on the film Problemista? On the surface, it <laughs> seemed like a bad thing. But if you watch the movie, um, it's it's not so much, right? So here's the thing. What is it? Um, no news is bad news. Or, you know, as long as you spell my name right, then, you know, I, at least I got my name out there. You know, the very fact that that shows up in a major movie, come on. No, nah, it was it's it's I I got a call from Clarice in a slight panic. Richard, <laughs> what do you think about this? Go watch the movie and tell us what you think. And I'm like, I went. Me and Margaret went and watched it. We had to go find this alternative indie kind of theater in, in UC Davis. We watched it. We're like, and then we learned that there's a new verb. It's can you file maker? Yes. <laughs> like, Margaret dug into the the. The, the the video the guy the guy who plays the main character and it wrote the movies the director right quite talented individual he has a beef with filemaker because he tried to use it and he had some challenges with it and it's and so yeah i uh it was kind of funny right you have all of you invest you have to invest it's not filemaker is not something that magically pops out of the sky like a balloon and lands on you and you're instantly successful it doesn't work that way. You have to invest, and then awesomeness comes from your hard work. He didn't like that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone wants the magic. And, but and guess what? The magic is in work. here. It's work. Yeah. Yes, it's the magic work. is in your head. Yeah, so he had a fit with that. So Margaret was like, oh. And she was reading this, like, because people are asking him about this in interviews. And uh, so, but yeah, I, can you, <laughs> Rick Kalman, can you file maker? Yes, can you, I can. Oh. Yes. I can file maker. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, so Rick, Rick is not mm -hmm. a stealthy human, uh, stealthy person. You can email him because we're kind of coming to the end of our hour here. But Rick underscore Kalman at Claris.com. If you have a suggestion or request, a couple paragraphs, maybe a screenshot and a little bit of a justification of why this is useful. So that way, when he passes it around at Claris, they understand that there's an upside for them. And Rich, we will have a regular cadence of these, hopefully, and more than just ask Rick, but ask any any PM. But I'm signing up for every four to six weeks. I will do this until the end of time. Um, I love doing this. Uh, I love taking your questions. Um, any 
decent product manager should not fear taking mm. unsolicited questions on the fly. Uh, I know where the boundaries are. I know what I can say, what I can't say, because I got a whole lot of experience, right? But I love, this is the favorite part of my job. Um, I, I always love talking candidly and honestly with our developers. They always appreciate, even if it's not what they want to hear, they want to be heard, they want to be listened to, they want to be understood. And I've always found that that's the best way to do it. Um, we are nothing whatsoever without you, other than a company seeking to try to stay in business. With you, we succeed. Um, you know, it's, we like Brad says, and I 100%, we don't build anything, you do. We just give you the tools to build it, right? So, you know, we're the tool builders. I might great, make a great hammer, but you're the expert on what you're using it for or any other tool, right? Um, and I also think a lot about, I like the analogy better of thinking about FileMaker the, as a development tool, the same way I think about Xcode, right? Um, is what is Apple's, like who goes out and says, oh, this is created by Xcode, right? No one cares, right? That's the means to the end, right? So it's a it's your intellectual property. You're the one that solved the problem, right? You're the one that that took, I, I, I used to love going to engages or dev cons, studying in the sessions and learning what you did with the thing that we gave you that we never intended it to do and being completely blown away about how clever you guys are. Um, that is so pleasurable, right? To do that um, because you're pouring this stuff in and you're trying to figure out, you know, does it have any use at all? The, the last thing I'll tell you the other, also is um, the whole developer quality of life thing really dawned on me because I used to use these sort of segues from one session of the keynote address at DevCon to another. I'm showing the, these big, features. And now I'd put something in the middle, just as sort of a segue. And I'd get far more uh, uh, applause from the little thing, right? And because it removed pain. And if you know the analogy of the, the lion where the boy removes the, 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 the thorn from the paw and the lion loves him, is yeah. I removed pain. Everyone loves pain to be removed, right? And, and then it was like, and I remember saying on stage, oh, it's the little things. And so that's developer quality of life. Those little things add up when you pay attention to them. So I'm excited that we're in this era of application lifecycle management, developer quality of life, and also, um, you know, how can we take FileMaker to the, for the next 40 years, right? Um, because if you don't do that, then you're just aging out, right? And then it, let's not forget, a lot of us have been using this platform for a very, very long time. There's another generation coming behind you all and their, their world is radically different um, in what is acceptable to them. What you grew up with and how you started and how you evolved, you know, I used to talk to Rich and say, Rich, how long does it take to learn FileMaker? And he said, oh, you know, master it seven years, right? If you're paying attention, well, that's, that's a lot. But when are you done mastering a musical instrument? When you die. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Never. Never. It's, think of it as a musical instrument, right? We're always trying to make it better, um, but you guys put it to work. All right, so that wraps it for today. We're going to be bringing Rick back on a four to six week rotating schedule. We're trying to get the other product managers. He just he just threw down on them. <laughs> They're real yeah. product managers. They'll show up. And yeah. have the stones to do it right. So yeah. <laughs> uh, looking forward to the other PMs coming in. Um, and they, Claris is busy here. Lots going on. Uh, we do have a impending launch at some point over the next couple months. At some point, the next release of FileMaker. I keep calling it 2124 because I can't get Claire's to pick uh, two numbers to use. You'll hear me refer to it that way. Depends on which department at Claire's you're talking to is what the name of the product is. It's so awesome. So 2124 is going to be coming out. And then uh, as we get close to that, Rick, that'll be about maybe about the next time you show up again. We'll have to see. So, yeah. And we'll also, in fact, it is. It would be, um, but but we're also we're going to get Doug Wallace in, um, oh. who's a product manager I work with, and he'll do a deeper dive into some of the things like Let's Encrypt and and these other things that we we've, we've done. Um, he, Doug used to be an SE, works for us out of uh, our office in Paris. Very talented gentleman was a developer before that, um, and uh, we'll get him here as well. I think he's we're we're building out the schedule, uh, Rich, so that we we can give you Thursdays um, on a on a a real cadence. Right. A real case, that'd be good. Yep. Yeah, but because the audience here wants to hear about what you're doing, all I'm trying to do is facilitate communication between Claris and the rest of the planet. So just open up the megaphone and go. So everyone, appreciate it. We'll be back tomorrow, every day, one o'clock, Monday through Friday, talking about the BioMaker platform. Thank you.
Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.